Welcome to this video series on frequently asked questions about the Java language. In this ongoing series of videos, we'll answer commonly asked questions about the Java language. You'll come away from this video with a solution to a question that you as a developer may have. In fact, these questions have been asked by thousands of developers, so you're not alone. Our approach to every question is simple. First, we pose the question about the Java language, Java development, or best practices. Then we fill in any background material so the question makes sense. Next, we get into the details of the question and discuss it further. Then we come up with an answer. As a bonus, we'll go deeper on the answer and look at code examples showing you what to do and in some cases what not to do with the counterexample. Stick around to the end of every video where we'll discuss the solution from an application security point of view. We'll let you know what to watch out for and how to keep your code secure. For more videos like this, like and subscribe to be among the first to know when we release something new. Ready to get started? Let's go. So the question we address in this video is, what does a cannot find symbol or cannot resolve symbol error mean in the Java language? Where do these messages come from? What can cause them? And how can you as a developer fix these issues when they appear? That's a great question. Let's take a look. First, what can cause these issues? The error messages cannot find symbol or cannot resolve symbol, as well as a whole host of similar messages come from the Java compiler. It means there's an error when compiling your source code. The message refers to something the compiler cannot understand. Java source code consists of keywords like public, class, if, and so on, literals like true, false, the string hello world, and so on, operators and other non-alphanumeric tokens like plus, minus, exclamation point, comments in white space, and finally, identifiers like variable names, method names, class names, etc. The cannot find error messages are about the identifiers. The compiler is telling you that it cannot understand what the identifier means or where it comes from. Different compilers may produce slightly different error messages or the compiler may find a different type of error, which will cause it to produce a different error message. So what can cause these problems? There are many causes, but we'll list a few of them here in the next few slides. For example, you may spell string as S-R-T-I-N-G. The compiler will have no idea what that means. Make sure that your case is correct. Spelling string with a lowercase s, for example. Remember, remember that Java is always case sensitive. Perhaps you're referring to a method or field that doesn't exist in the class, or it's not accessible from the location you're trying to use. Maybe you're trying to use a class method as a field, or a field as a method. Maybe you forgot to add an import statement for a class, or maybe you didn't specify the package name correctly in the import statement. This can be quite common. One problem that can be a bit tricky to find is if you forget to include the new operator. Incorrect or missing dependencies from third-party libraries can also cause these types of errors. If you're using an older Java compiler that is pre-version 10 and your code contains the var keyword, you'll get an error. There are many other situations that can cause the problem to occur, but the list above covers many of the more common. So how do you solve the problem? Java compilers do a great job of pointing out problems, and there's often help in the IDE that will give you some guidance on how to fix the problem, but other times it can be misleading or downright unhelpful. The best advice is to look at the line where the problem is indicated, try to determine the symbol that's causing the error message to appear, and figure out why the compiler might not be able to resolve the symbol. Look through the prior list of issues that we discussed above to see if any of these seem like a likely cause. There may be more than one way to resolve the problem, so be creative. If you're stumped and cannot figure out the problem, comment out the lines of code where the problem is reported. Then add back the statement a little at a time until you can reproduce the error. This careful review of the problem can sometimes help you identify the cause. Let's take a look at some code and see some of these errors in action. I went ahead and set up a project in IntelliJ IDEA in a Windows 10 environment. Let's create a new class called cannot find 01. We'll use the PSVM shortcut from IntelliJ to generate our main method. 
Now we'll purposely create some errors and see what messages we get from IntelliJ to see if they're beneficial. First, let's create a variable s of type string builder. In this case, we'll misspell the class name in the declaration. First thing to notice is it turns red. This is a strong hint to us that something is wrong. If we hover our mouse over the class name, we get an error message that says cannot resolve symbol. Not super helpful, but at least we know something's wrong. Notice too that no documentation is found, which is another indication the class may not be the one we expect. IntelliJ is offering to create the class for us, which is nice, but ultimately not helpful. This is a problem we would solve most likely on our own once we realize we fat fingered the class name. Let's go ahead and correct the class name and we see everything is fine now. For the next error, we'll create a string variable called myString and assign it to a string object, passing to the constructor the literal foo, but without invoking the new operator. We'll see the red line under the problem so we know something is up. Let's hover the mouse over the problem to see what the pop-up says. IntelliJ does detect that we're missing a new operator and is offering to insert it. Let's go ahead and fix the problem by adding new. Notice that we could have also fixed the problem by simply assigning the string variable to a string literal. We'll do that here and assign to a new variable called the string equal to the string literal foo. Remember, sometimes there are multiple ways to solve the problem. For our last problem, we'll invoke a method called SumCoolMethod on the myString object. We'll get a helpful message that says it cannot resolve the method in addition to turning red. This will at least give us a clue of where to start looking if we think the method should exist. All right, let's switch gears and let's consider the cannot find symbol error from an application security perspective. Are there security concerns around this issue? The answer to that really depends on how the problem was solved. If it's simply a case of an identifier that was incorrectly spelled or some other kind of incorrectly typed name, there should be no security issues. However, should the solution involve resolution to a third party library, make sure you're using a library that you expect to be using and also trust. If the problem is related to a missing third party library that you must resolve, pay attention to the quality of libraries you're using. Do you know where these come from? Are they well supported? Are there regular updates to the library? Are you close to or on the latest version? Do you know what open vulnerabilities exist for this library? You should always be updating your libraries to avoid increasing your technical debt. The primary CWV that is related to these concerns is 1104, use of unmaintained third-party components. OWASP has reported the use of packages with known vulnerabilities among the top 10 for many years. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share the video with others. To get our free ebook on how to write more secure Java code, go to www.beginsecuretraining.com. When writing code, remember to always begin secure.